society is made of everybody. So I am neither male nor female. The world is diverse whether we want it or not. The question is usually, is diversity allowed? A man is no less a man just because he cries. Being a gay guy in Kenya has made me more strong, I would say. I'm not just what I look. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex and gender non-conforming. We should give them a chance to say what it is that they are saying. We understand where they are coming from. We are being real. Let me all welcome you to today's um, Gender Forum. I have heard the question before many times, why are we actually talking publicly about sexual minorities? Why don't we just let people do whatever they want to do out of the public eye? But it's because violations of human rights are a day-to-day -day experience of a lot of people, many people that belong or are believed to belong to sexual minority here in Kenya, but also worldwide. So we need to speak out, to guard and to defend what's most essential to all our societies. So the reason that we're having this conversation is because we have made something that is private and intimate a subject of public legislation and we have used our parliament to legislate. The Constitution of Kenya 2010 guarantees a wide range of rights and fundamental freedom and it also provides strong commitment to the principles of equality and non-discrimination. We have had the chance of having a beautiful constitution. I'm really proud of ourselves. So of course today we're talking about human rights and equality in the context of gender diversity and sexual minorities. So maybe um, to just get an understanding of what we're talking about, um, and this is an observation we've made when we're coming in, you're all filling in your names and there was a column for gender. Um, we can start with you in terms of defining gender diversity. I choose to take a political position to explain that gender is not necessarily what is between my legs, rather a process of socialization that has allowed me to interrogate what it means that we have set expectation of what masculinity or femininity is. If you live in a, in a, in a country in which who you are or a part of who you are is criminalized, then it doesn't change who you are, it just makes you conceal who you are to the general public. Just tell us some of uh, the cases of discrimination uh, that we have come across. I'm gay, I'm a homosexual, and most of the discrimination that we face is not because of being gay, it's because society presumes that if you are a man and you like another man, then you are taking the position of a woman, that you are lowering yourself lower than a man should be in society. The government has deliberately refused to register any organization that has the words gay and lesbian in its name. Um, we've had citizens evicting other citizens from their houses because they suspect them to be gays and lesbians. One of the things that, that is unfortunate is the, is the way that everybody has pathologized this idea of men who have sex with men. So what it has served to do is kind of lock um, the idea of the gay man in a HIV spreading kind of gift giving box. Why should we even be talking about this? I think it's important that we understand all these, um, can I say, categorizations. Human rights is basically about uh, tolerance and the dignity of the person, you know? And that is what makes us human and separates us from all other beings. So I think it is important that we understand all these things so as to be able to inform how we relate to each other in society, because we all belong to this society. We need to be a little bit more tolerant of people who see things differently. There's the Swahili saying, in this case, the government and the state is mamayetu, you know? And so they're the people tasked with ensuring that the systems that we have work and are applicable and accessible by every Kenyan. The section 162 to 164 and a lot more sections within the penal code or within our law are introductions from a British colony. So for me also, I like to urge Kenyans to think through what we are saying in terms of living post-colonialization and also in taking on identities as Kenyans 
and those identities reflecting our reality. So when we talk about these laws, for example, the unnatural acts against the order of nature, to what extent do we interrogate what it is governing, limiting, or to what impact it has on our lives. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing yeah. about this an African word yes. is, is that it assumes that Africanness is a, it's like a garment. You can like wear it or you can take it off you know, um, at, at points in time when, it, when, it, when it's convenient for you. So of course for our, our, our dear people in legislature, um, it's not, they, they don't think it's an African of them to wear uh, an Italian suit or, um, you know, or a wig, like those, the, those yeah. painful wigs that, they, they, that in, in legislature that they have to wear, that the speaker has to wear. Yeah, That's not well. an African at all. Um, but it is apparently an African That's to right. express yourself sexually. It is an African for a woman to have opinions. Mm -hmm. So it really essentializes us into the idea of blackness that in fact was given to us by the colonialist. Mm. I would love to see an Africa that goes back to the tenets that Africa was born into. If history is to be believed, Africa was full of difference, but an embrace of that difference. Uh, Eric, there was the Freedom of Association petition that was filed. Um, for many people, I'd like uh, you and then uh, the Commissioner to comment on this. So, um, in response to that, Kenya's Attorney General had this to say. They are a threat to humanity. They have perverted lusts. They have sexual parts that don't fit. They need medical, spiritual and behavioral therapy. They are a conspiracy to convert the world. And if the court grants them rights, then we can all kiss humanity goodbye. It surprises me because the Attorney General taught me in law school and he spoke very eloquently about equality for sexual and gender minorities. Oh, did he now? Yes, he did. Oh, did he now? I'd want to actually meet him and ask <laughs> oh, him face to face, yes. Whether he lied to us in constitutional law Obviously class. he did. I think the first thing that is important is to stop making statements and start asking questions and encourage everybody to ask questions and not intrusive questions like we must know what you're doing in your bedroom in the night or whatever as regards everybody but questioning the basics of the way things are why do we understand gender this way i take it as his personal opinion or his advice to his client if i may put it that way okay but uh, <laughs> by and large laws are made by society right uh, the other one was about the struggle mm -hmm. for um, actualization. They are called sexual minorities because they are actually a minority group. It is not going to be an easy battle, yeah. but I think they just have to uh, continue with the fight. A lot of us are closeted, so there is the presumption that only maybe those who are willing to take on a tag are uh, part of that community. Um, okay, just one last question though. Do we have unity of purpose? The unity of purpose that we are seeing is from government, civil society and, and uh, private citizens when it comes to decriminalizing homosexuality. Mm. I think everybody is trying in one way or another. Forced by circumstances for sure. You did mention that uh, you have the numbers, some in the heterosexual uh, marriages and I'm asking if what we are doing, I'm part of the we, eh? if what we are doing is good, don't you think that we need to uh, convince these people in heterosexual marriages so that they pull out and make the non-adulterated gays have the numbers? You know, everyone has a right to come out, everyone has a right to keep their private space. And so when I see a lot of brothers still being in the closet and having Mpango Akando, I don't tell them come out of the closet. But what, I, uh, what we need to underscore is that whether you're closeted or you're out, you need to be a champion of equality for all. I've heard it mentioned that homosexuality is against the law in Kenya. I just want a clarification. Is it being a homosexual or is it having sex with another man if I'm a man? The Kenyan law does not make you criminal for being gay or lesbian or bisexual. What it does is it criminalizes the sexual acts between two people of the same sex. First, we are told the creation, we, Adam and Eve was created and not Adam and Abel or Adam and Steve or the other way or Eve and whoever. 
I am a Christian, I have very Christian beliefs and values. It also doesn't stop me from sitting on this panel and being firmly everything that I believe. So one of the biggest assumptions that we make is that Christians are anti-gay. It's not entirely true. Okay, thank you for that. I think the last word thing is uh, Kenya is big enough for everybody. I think that's all I'll say. So I'm hopeful that all this violence and all this pain and all this uh, frustration and that those very dehumanizing questions of am I here to recruit you are worth something. And that something is that my child who's four years old is able to live in a world that allows you to be who you are, that doesn't limit you to what everybody expects of you, but nurtures what is good of you, but also questions what is not right. And what is not right is not something that any one of us can say, because your life is your life.